Each one of us, right, you may not be able to relate to with the testimony that I'm about to get into, right? And you may be able to, but one thing that I know we can relate to is that we're all born with this void, this emptiness inside of us that all of us, we try means to fill some alcohol, some weed, some a relationship, some family, some success, some, some pride, some popularity, some clothes, some, some money, some fame, some fortune, whatever it is. I just want to tell you this. If it's not Jesus Christ, it's like pouring water into a broken pitcher. It, it'll fill up, but eventually it's all going to pour out. You're going to have to do it all over again. And that's, that's, that's my story. I want to get into that. I'm originally from Vallejo, California. Before I rep the, well, I, I used to represent. The Bible says we're, we're not of this world. We're just passing through. So I don't want to say I'm from here. I'm from the kingdom. <laughs> but before I rep the kingdom of God, I used to rep Vallejo, California by way of the crest. You guys heard of Matt Dre. He lived two streets over from me. You guys heard of Matt Dre, right? Up here. Huh? Okay. So where I'm from, man, it was known for nothing less than drug dealing, cop killing, prostitution, and every rapper. You didn't get credit being a rapper unless you had that included in your career. Long story short, on the flip side of that, right, I also grew, I, I grew up, like I said earlier, my parents forced me to go to church, so I had a knowledge of God. I went to church. I just didn't want to live for God. I was the one in the back trying to look at all the girls and and I walk up and get a dollar from somebody so I can put it in my offer so I can get a better view. I didn't want Jesus. I didn't, want, I didn't even want to know God. I didn't understand fully that you can have an intimate relationship with the God that you can't see. It didn't make sense for me. And, 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 and frankly, where I was from, it wasn't the cool thing to do. And I was trying to be cool. I grew up in a broken household. My, my, my family, my mother and my father... As far back as I could remember, I've never seen one intimate action displayed between the two of them. All I seen was arguing. All I seen was fighting. All I remember was my dad chasing off my, my mom out the house with a knife. Is this, is this about to die? We good. So I had, all the, I had this void inside of me. I had this pain inside of me. Right? And um, since I was young, since I was like eighth grade, I was, a, I was a basketball player and everything. And, and I had coaches telling me that I was going to make it. Are we good with this fight? Okay, it's, it's kind of. No. Okay. Can you turn it back up or I don't know what happened. But I had coaches telling me, right, that I was, I was going to make it to the NBA. So that was my plan A, B through Z. I had no plan, no other plan. I was no other uh, no other option, either NBA or whatever. So, so growing up where I was from, like I said, like you, you make a decision that you're not gonna be in the streets and be with the hood and gangbang and all that stuff and sell drugs, and you're gonna be successful and go to school. You're not the cool kid now. You're a target. So now I was, now I had, I had a situation. I was starting to get. Uh, the friends that I grew up with, I was starting to, to kind of get outcast and, and get messed with. Just more pain, more pain. Long story short, right, I said I called myself a Christian, right, and I had no desire to live for God. But check this out. This is for somebody, too. This is where I was. I was, I was in my walk. I called myself a Christian, but I, I wasn't doing as bad as, I, as everybody around me was doing, but I wasn't doing as good as I knew I could be doing. And what I was doing in my head, right, in my heart, and God seeing right through it was saying, you know what, I still want to do my little crime, my little dirt, but I'm a Christian, yeah, cool, all that. I'm not doing as bad as I'm not selling drugs, I'm not carrying guns, I'm not doing all that stuff. I'm still having sex, I'm still stealing, I'm still doing all this stuff, but I'm doing my little crime. I'm not going to step out of my immorality line. But, but since I'm not doing as bad as my friends, and since I'm not doing like Mac Dre and doing all these other people in my hood, Selling drugs and, and pimping girls and all that stuff. Lord, you got to give me the life that I want. And that's what we do a lot of times. We don't submit, like my boy was saying, making Jesus our Lord. We go to him like, here, I'm going to give you this, and you give me that. So, after high school, when I, when I started to pursue uh, my basketball career, and I ended up getting injured, and, it, and it, life didn't happen the way that I, I planned for it to happen, I got in this 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 depressed mode. I, I, 
I panicked. I, I didn't know. I, I got angry at God. I, I said, Lord, you, I was doing this. I, look, I wasn't being as bad as them. You didn't give me a life. I, I want nothing to do with you. I want nothing to do with church. I want nothing to do with Christians. I'm done. And I had this void that I now, I, I had no reservations, right, from, from filling it the way that everybody else was trying to fill it. So I started to pursue selling drugs and using drugs and, and carrying guns. And, and, and anytime I can, I, I'll think about my past and any pain that I had in my, in my, in my heart, and I would try to deal with it. Oh, yeah, my partners who I used to, it used to be my partners who, when I tried to be successful, they want to try to mess with me. Okay, yeah, I, yeah now I, I have nothing to live for. So now I'm carrying guns and bringing guns to them and trying to start beef with them. I'm trying to fill this void. Trying to, now, now I'm trying to fill it with the reputation. Long story short, it was just like a never-ending spiral downwards. And I, I was 19 years old, right? Check this out. I just lost, man. Just depressed, not even knowing what I was doing. Just looking for myself over here and over there and over there and in this and in that and in that. So I said, you know what? I'm going to be a rapper now. <laughs> and you know, like I said, I said rapping, right? And, and without drug dealing, it's not even, a, it's not even, it's not even respected. So I was like, okay, if I'm going to do a rap career, i got to be a drug dealer gangster. So I was 19 years old, man, and I moved to Hawaii in pursuit of my rap career and, and, and my drug dealer career. 19 years old, shipping XC pills, weed, coke, dope, and guns from, from the Bay Area, from, from Vallejo, California to Hawaii. I was 19 years old, driving three nice cars, living on a nice house in the beach, making a lot of money. No one on the island would walk up to the club and the bouncer would just... Let me in, and I would just tell people who knew me in line to, to come on with me. And it, all of it was just a it was just a front. It was just a it was just it was fake. I presented myself like yeah, I got everything that I wanted. And, and I was trying to make myself think that I had everything that I wanted. But at night, people didn't see my my, my when the girls went away, when the, when the high went down, people didn't see that emptiness that I saw every night when I held that gun to my mouth. Two chicken to pull the trigger. But how many of you guys know that we, we serve a loving God, man? How many of you guys know that we really, how many of you guys really know that we serve a loving God, man? How many of you guys really, really know that we serve a loving God? So check this out, man. We know, I know it's all, it's all dark, it's all gloomy now, but there is hope at the end of this. There's hope, man. Then check this out. This is for somebody, too. This is for somebody, too. When you wonder why God is separating you. So this is what God did with me. Sometimes in God's love, right, he would take you from a place where you refuse to hear his voice and place you in a place where you have no choice but to. He will, he will remove all the distractions around you because he's trying to get something in you and get some stuff out of you. And that's what he did with me, man. Out of his love, out of his wisdom, he took me from where I was getting my fulfillment so he could give me true fulfillment. 